Hey there, this is Kamal, and in this video, we're going to learn about Bootstrap. So, let's get this started. Alright, so first things first, what is Bootstrap? So, Bootstrap is a CSS framework which simplifies the amount of code that you generally have to write inside of CSS to make your website look good. It also has some JavaScript functionality as well, which you can use to customize the Bootstrap or add in some functionality as well. But for this video, we'll be only sticking with the CSS properties. Alright, so let's now see how we can integrate Bootstrap into our own project. So let's go to our VS Code editor and in that I have a file called as index.html and that file I have the basic boilerplate template. Okay, so now instead of this, let's go to the body section in that let's create a heading. So I'll give the text as something like this. So this is a heading. So in order to link this, so there's actually two approaches that you can go for. The first way is to use the link tag. So if I go to the Bootstrap website once again and let's go to the documentation section and in that let's go to the getting started and inside the introduction section you have the quick start and you have a link for the CSS properties right. So you can copy this from here and paste it inside your head section. So this is actually linking to a CSS file which is present online. So as you can see here inside the href attribute we have a file called as bootstrap.min.css. So this file is actually present online and that is what is being linked through the link tag. All right, so this is a bootstrap CSS. Similarly, let's add in the JavaScript functionality as well. So there's actually two links that you can use. You can either use a bundle version or you can go with the separate version as well. I'll go with the bundle version for now. Let's also include that in here. And as you can see here, this is also linking to a file called as bootstrap.bundle.min.js. So these two files are actually present online and they are being linked through the href and src attributes. All right. So we're not going to be using the JS directly, but instead this will help the bootstrap functionality. So some of the components inside of bootstrap use JS to add in some animations. All right. So it's better to include the script tag. So the second way is to directly download it. So you can go back to the documentation section and that you can go to the download section and there's one called as compiled CSS and JS. So you can download that. And once you have downloaded that, you will have a zip file. So in that zip file, you will have two folders. The first one will be a CSS folder. The second one will be a JS folder. And in the CSS folder, you will have multiple files. And in that, there will be one file called as bootstrap.min.css. So what you can do is that you can remove this link from here. And instead, you can directly link to this bootstrap.min.css, which is present inside the CSS folder. All right. So you can do that. And the same thing can be applied for the script tag as well. So there will be a JS file as well with this particular name. You can link to that as well. So that is the second way of doing this. But for this video, let's stick with this particular type of linking. All right. So before going further, let's actually see what we have for now. So I'm going to right click here and click on open with live server. So this is what we have. So before going further, you need to understand one thing. So let's say I want to give a color property to this particular heading. So what we generally do is that we type in a class name. Let's say I'm going to type it as main underscore heading. So we type in a class name, then we create a CSS file. And using this particular class name, we apply a particular property. Let's say the color is going to be red. And that particular color property will be applied to this particular heading, right? So we use a custom class that we are actually creating. But with the bootstrap, what you can do is that you can use predefined classes. So there's already a file called as bootstrap.main.css to which we have already linked. So in that bootstrap.main.css, there are a few classes which are predefined with some functionality and you can type in this class name and that particular functionality will be applied. So let's say I want to make this color that is a text color to be red. So there's a class for that called as text hyphen danger. So I can type that in and if I go to the browser, as you can see, the text has changed from black to red. And if you want to know more about all these classes, what you can do is that you can go to bootstrap section and in the documentation section, you can let's say search for colors. So you have this, right? So once you go to the color section, as you can see, we are using the text hyphen danger. So that class is used to create a red color text. Similarly, there's one for primary, which is a blue color, then success for green and warning for yellow. So in that way, you can type in whatever class name that you want and that particular color property will be applied. So to apply color properties, we use text hyphen, whatever color that you want to use. Let's say I'm going to add in a background color. So I'm going to search for background colors and these are the classes that you can actually use. Let's say I want to give it a black background. So I can type in BG hyphen dark. So that is what we have for black. Once I save that and go to the browser, as you can see, we have a black background with red text. So you can chain any number of classes that you want and all of those properties will be applied to the element. 
similarly let's say i can you know align the element as well so let's go to text alignment and as you can see we have these options right i can align the text to the center and the class for that is text hyphen center so let's type in text hyphen center and if i go to the browser as you can see the alignment has been done similarly you can search for padding and margin as well so let's search for padding so let's go to spacing margin and padding let's not go with this instead i'll explain it directly to you so in order to actually use padding what you can do is that you can just type in p which represents padding then you have to give a hyphen and a number and this actually starts from 1 to 5 where 1 is the lowest spacing and 5 is the highest spacing so let's say i can give it as p hyphen 5 so it's going to have five units of padding all around all right so this is what we have similarly i can change it to one and it's going to have one unit of padding all around or I can give it as three and it's gonna have three units of padding. So in this case, we are applying padding all around, but let's say you wanna apply padding only to the top. You can give it as PT hyphen three. That's gonna give only padding to the top. Similarly, you can give it as PB for the bottom. And if I say that, you'll have something like this. And if you wanna apply it to the left, then the letter for that will be PS, which is for start. And if you wanna apply it to the right, it's gonna be PE, which is gonna be for the end. If I save that, there's going to be a bit of padding to the right, but you're not able to see that because there's already a bit of spacing. So if you go back, as you can see, we have the P class and in that we have top, bottom, start and end. Apart from these four, you can also apply X and Y, which stands for X axis and Y axis. So let's say you want to apply padding to the top and bottom at the same time, right? So you can type in PY, which stands for the Y axis. And if I save that, it's going to apply the padding to the top and the bottom at the same time. Similarly, you can type in PX for the X axis and that will be applied. So the only difference between a margin and padding is that instead of P, you're going to type in M. So if I give it as M Y and if I save it, you're going to have a bit of margin to the top and at the bottom. All right. So that is the only difference for that. So it starts from zero and goes till five, where zero is like having nothing and five is the largest number that you can give. And it's not preferred to use auto because you'll have more control if you directly use these numbers. All right. Apart from that, there's also a lot of things that you can actually do, all right? So in order to understand what you can do, you have to first search through this section and you can, you know, get to know what are the things that you can apply and what are the things that you can actually do with this. So let's go to the text. And apart from aligning it to the center, there's also for transforming it, increasing the font size, changing the font weight as well. So you can change the font weight by typing in FW hyphen bold. So let's try it out. So I can type in FW hyphen bold. And if I save that, the bold property will be applied. In this way, you can apply any property that you want to any element as well. You just have to search for that particular thing that you want to do and you'll have the class respective for that. You can just copy that class name and type it wherever you want and that particular property will be applied. So apart from applying these properties directly to individual elements, you can also create multiple elements as well. Like let's say you want to create a form. So you can actually search for forms and we actually have a lot of customizations when it comes to forms. Let's say you want to create a particular form. So let's go to the HTML and let's actually create a dummy form and let's see what are the things that we can apply to make it look better. So I'm going to type in a form. So it's going to be form. Then let's remove the action from here. And inside the form, let's create an input field. So let's save that and go to the browser. So we have a plain input box. All right. So now in order to customize this, let's create a class for this. So inside the input field, I'm going to give it a class called as form hyphen control. So this is the class which is given to most of the elements present inside of forms. So most of the form elements have this class. And once I give that class and save that, as you can see, that element has stretched from left to right, occupying everything. So in this way, that particular styling will be applied to the input. Similarly, you can do the same thing for text area as well. You can just type in text area, then you can create a class for this. And in that you can type in form hyphen control. And if I save that, you'll have a text area. All right. So you're not able to see that, but you actually have it here. All right. So this is a text area. All right. So this is the text area. So as you can see here, the elements are actually stretching from left to right. And in some cases, we don't want that to happen because we want to have a bit of spacing to the left and the right, right? So you also want that to be shrinked down if you go to the mobile screen, also shrink up or upscale when it comes to larger screens. So in order to make this more dynamic and more fluid, what we can do is that we can wrap everything inside of this inside a division. And for this particular division, we can give it a class. So there's a class inside of Bootstrap called as container. 
So if I give that class and if I save that, as you can see, there's a bit of spacing to the left and to the right. That is being applied through the container class. So most of the elements that we create inside of Bootstrap will be placed inside of container. Like in this case, I've placed it inside a container and all of these have made dynamic and they will be, you know, scaled up or scaled down or adjusted based on the device size. Okay. But the main problem here is that container has a fixed size. So it doesn't go beyond this. It only scales down, right? So if you want to make it more fluid and stretch from left to right, but still, you know, have a bit of spacing and it's not touching to the edges. In that case, you can type in container hyphen fluid. If I save that and go to the browser, as you can see, it is stretching from left to right, but still there's a bit of space so that it, you know, it doesn't touch to the edges. So you can search for containers as well inside of this, and you can understand what are the type of containers that you can actually use. Apart from this, one of the most commonly used form elements is the buttons. So you can search for buttons in here as well. So there are a lot of properties that you can apply for buttons as well. Like you can copy this particular button styling and you can place that into your own form and that will be applied as well. And apart from that, if you want, you can also create form elements directly. So like we have an example here, right? This is an example of a dummy form. You can copy that from here and that will be added as well. And there are actually a lot of things that you can, you know, customize inside of this. You can go to the checkboxes and radios or you can go to the input groups. You also have a range as well. So you can create a slider range as well. So there's a lot of things that you can actually use and customize. So you have to skim through all of this and understand what are the things that you can change accordingly. All right, so before closing this off, let's actually see one of the main important things that we generally use inside of Bootstrap. So in order to actually explain that, let's go to the code editor and let's remove this from here. Let's type in a paragraph. Let's generate some dummy content as well. And let's save that. So we have something like this. All right. So now let's also add in an image here and I'm going to give in a dummy image. All right. So we have some dummy content, right? So we have the container and inside of that we have some dummy content. So right now, as you can see, everything is laid one below the other, but in some cases we don't want that to happen. Instead, we want it one beside the other in a single line. So in that case, what we can do is that we can apply a flex property. So we have something called as flex inside of bootstrap. So in order to actually apply flex, what you can do is that you can go to the parent division that is div and in this let's type in d hyphen flex. So that is the base class that you have to give. If I give that and if I save that, then as you can see, everything is aligned to the center, right? Everything is in a single line. But the main problem here is that it's not aligned completely to the center. So the text is at the top and the paragraph is also at the top. If you want it to be aligned from the top and the bottom in a single line with having enough space at the top and bottom, what you can do is that you can just type in align hyphen items center. Once I save that, as you can see here, everything is being aligned to the center, right? So we have the heading at the center. We also have the paragraph at the center. So let's change this image instead of giving it such a large image. Let's give a smaller image. Let's directly search for the image instead of using this. Let's use this. Let's copy the URL. Let's go back. Let's remove this from here. And instead, let's give that and save that. And this is what we have. All right. So you already see how we can align them vertically from the top and the bottom. Apart from this, you can also align them from the left and the right as well. For that, there's another class called as justify hyphen content hyphen center. So if you use that and if you save that, you'll have that aligned to the left and right as well. But in this case, there's no change because they're already aligned. But in some cases, there are things that, you know, are not aligned perfectly. In that case, you can do that and that will be applied. So the only difference that you have to keep in mind is that for align, you're going to have items and for justify, you're going to use content. Apart from that, the center is going to be remain same and deflex is something that is going to be there by default. And that is a base class. So align is for aligning them vertically from the top and the bottom and justify is for aligning them from the left and the right. All right. So that is the main difference. If you want to know more about this, you can go back to the bootstrap documentation as well, and you can search for flex properties. So this is what we have. So if I scroll down, as you can see, we have the justify content, right? So we can give it as justify hyphen content hyphen start, and that's going to be aligned to the left. If you give it as end, it will be aligned to the right. If you give it a center, it will be aligned to the center. That's what we had seen. Apart from these three, you also have another three you can use. So there's one called as between for aligning them like this, one for around and one for evenly. So you can see that in this representation as well. 
apart from that you can also align them as well vertically so these are the things that you can use right so in this way you can align elements present inside of a container as well so if you have a container like this or a division in that you can align any element that you want okay and that will be applied and it's going to look something like this so these are the basic bootstrap properties that you need to know to get familiar with bootstrap all right so in the next video we're going to carry on with this and we're going to cover the bootstrap grid and also we'll see how we can make the website that we create using bootstrap to be mobile responsive as well all right so before closing this off i just wanted to say that this video was made in collaboration with packet prep so packet prep is a training and placement company located in hyderabad and these videos were specifically made for the job guarantee training program that they have going on right now and that is the full stack java developer program so apart from these free video lectures they also have some premium content as well like lecture notes practice and test papers for you to get better at your core concepts and they also have offline as well as online classes for this program and they also conduct multiple demo sessions as well so you can attend any of these demo sessions and understand the things they are teaching as well as the training approach first hand so if you are interested i provided the website link in the description down below you can go there and check them out so that's it for this video guys i hope you have liked what you've seen till now if you did then please the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well thanks so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next video